Welcome fellow space engineers to my eighth tutorial, this one by popular demand, by which I mean three people ask me for it, is going to be about gravity drives. Now I've switched over to creative mode just to speed things along and so you don't have to watch me running back and forth between what I'm welding and getting more parts, so hopefully that'll silence some of the whining about that sort of thing. But all the principles that I'm applying in gravity drives here obviously translate directly into you playing in survival. Gravity drives are basically a way to add extra acceleration to your ship and they're pretty darn useful especially in online PvP multiplayer because a ship with a good dra gravity drive can outfly, outmaneuver, outrun, just about out everything a ship that doesn't have a gravity drive. And the two basic components of the gravity drive are artificial mass and gravity generator. The artificial mass block is a block that responds to gravity. Normally you put a gravity generator on a ship, it doesn't push the ship, it just pushes players and floating objects. That's why I'm able to walk around on this ship. But if you want the ship to be affected by gravity, you can put an artificial mass block on it and notice the ship has started to sink because its gravity generator is pushing on that artificial mass block. Get rid of that. Okay, so the idea is to take that principle and apply it on a large scale in order to get huge amounts of acceleration. The first thing I'm going to do here is you gotta go into your info panel and turn on center of mass detection. That will show you these little things right here. This is the center of mass of this ship. Center of mass is very important because if you don't apply uh, force in a symmetrical matter, manner around this center of gravity, the gravity drive will cause your ship to turn or twist or tumble when it's under the effects of the drive. Now what I'd really like to do is find out where the heck that gravity generator is in this ship and get rid of it. Okay, so here's the gravity generator. I'm going to just get rid of that for right now. There. Now there's no gravity in the ship. And that's one of the trade-offs that you make when you have a gravity drive in your ship is that you probably won't be able to use normal gravity for walking around. That's a window there. How about I not block my field of vision with a stupid block there? Okay, so it usually works better if you build your ship from the ground up around the concept of the gravity drive, but I don't have the patience to build a ship, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to install a new gravity drive on the default red ship that comes with the quick start. Okay, the first thing you need to do is you need to put a bunch of gravity generators on the ship, all with the, their attach points, the bottom of them pointing the same direction. And it's good to do this in a place where it won't get shot. I mean, you can do it on the outside if you want, but it's better to do it on the inside where it won't get shot. Now look at this nice, big, open, otherwise useless area here. I think I'll use this for that purpose. So. I'm just going to make some surfaces on which to build here. That ought to be enough for demonstration purposes. And I'm going to install gravity generators on those surfaces. 9, 12, 13, 14, 15. That ought to be enough for demonstration. Okay, then I'm going to go into a control panel, doesn't matter which one, could even be just a flight seat, whatever. And I'm going to find those gravity generators and I'm going to turn them all off for now. But I'm going to save them as grav gens. Turn them off. Okay. That's so I don't get shot into space if I accidentally turn off my... Uh, jetpack while I'm working here, and so that as I start to place mass blocks, the ship doesn't start pulling without me. Now this build's going to be a little bit complicated in that I was surprised to find that the red ship does, isn't symmetric about its axis of gravity. I mean, the center of gravity is right here, kind of 
between these two blocks here, so that should pose an interesting challenge when attempting to get the gravity drive going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out just putting some mass blocks here and here. And the reason I put two is because the center of gravity is about there. Oh, but it's a block higher than where I put it too. So I'm going to put two more above that. Remember, you're trying to strive for symmetry. I'm also going to turn them off. Then I'm going to take the gravity generators I grouped before, add in the artificial mass blocks, and change the name to gravity, gravity, gravity drive. And save it. Now, in theory, this should basically be all I need. So let's head up to the cockpit and see if I got some gravity drive. And see how badly the thing pulls. Okay. So. I'm going to go into my G menu and load up the gravity drive group. You can tell which one it is because it'll have the multiple blueprint icon. So toggle block on and off. All right. As it is, the ship turns very slowly under its own power. I'd like to add more gyros to it if it was my real ship, but let's see how it works. Turning on the gravity drive by hitting one. Okay, I've got forward momentum. <coughs> Not so great, not so fast. The inertial dampeners are on, which help fight acceleration. Okay, so it's going forward, and there's really no appreciable pull, so I managed to get it pretty darn symmetrical. All right, I'm going to turn the gravity drive off, turn the inertial dampeners back on. All right, that's nice and everything, but it's really not enough. I mean, that was some pretty paltry acceleration for a gravity drive. So, the answer now is once you know that you've got your mass blocks placed in a symmetric pattern, just add more gravity generators. And it's multiplicative uh, when you're doing the math for this sort of thing. The, number, the uh, total amount of Gs in your uh, gravity drive can be expressed as the number of gravity generators times the number of mass blocks. So I could add more mass blocks too and get more effects out of my... How the hell do I get out of here? God, I hate these ship designs. That's a window? Ugh. I just tunnel my way out, but I don't want to change the center of mass. Okay, here's a door. <sighs> Stupid artsy-fartsy ship. Alright, enough ranting about that. So, because I know it's symmetrical, I'm going to double the number of mass blocks. I could be screwing myself here. I'm going to add them to the gravity drive, like so. And I need to turn off the new ones so that they're all synchronized. Okay, so that will double the force of the gravity drive, and at the same time I'm also going to tack on more gravity generators. Now, unlike the mass blocks, symmetry doesn't matter when you ta tack on more gravity generators. You could stick them anywhere just so long as the field of gravity touches all of your mass blocks. So here's another way thing you can do too. You can you can put it with the bottom, the attach point, facing the back of the ship as well, as long as you remember to reverse polarity on the gravity drive its or the gravity generator itself. So if I put these like this, now I can just go into any control panel. Uh, gravity generators. Okay, so here are the new gravity generators from here to here. I just change their acceleration to negative one g. Turn them off. Find uh, gravity generators and I'm going to add them to the list of generators. I like keeping a separate list of generators in case I have to change something about them all at once. Okay, and the gravity drive also needs them added to its group. So 
so if I've done this right, this should markedly increase the amount of thrust that this ship gets from the gravity drive. Where was that door? Here it is. Okay. I'm going to go turn off my jetpack again. All right. So let's aim into empty space and turn on the gravity drive. Oh, that's much more like it. That took only about five seconds to get up to max speed. And I'm leaving the dampeners on so that I can use my thrusters to turn. Now one thing that's interesting is that when I'm flying straight, I can tell that I'm slewing downward because, see, the, the, the thrusters are firing downward even though I think I'm going straight. And you can tell ever so slightly, yep, look at that. See, it's pulling upward. Now, you can just fight that with your mouse if you want to, but that means that you need to make an adjustment by placing more mass blocks, in this case, probably towards the top of the ship. And not too far from the center of axis because it's not pulling that badly. But this serves as a pretty good demonstration of how to stick a gravity drive in a ship. And like I say, it's usually much more effective if you build the ship around the concept of the gravity generator and maintain its uh, symmetry of mass. And also, if you're in a ship that's strapped for power, you can also uh, place the gravity generators close and reduce their field. But generally, on an extremely large ship, which are the ones that need gravity drives the most, it doesn't really matter if you um, reduce the size or not because you've got power to spare. Okay, I'm going to turn the gravity generator off. So let's see, right now I've got 8 artificial mass and I think 26 gravity generators. The sweet spot, as you can usually see in the videos that I make, like for instance the Vindicator video, that's got a 56G gravity generator and that it's got 56 gravity generators all pulling in the same direction and I think it has somewhere upwards of maybe 30 or 40 mass blocks so that thing goes despite being about I don't know 8,000 tons it goes from zero to max speed in about two seconds so apply these principles to your ships it's very simple once you get the hand of it and you will have a nice gravity drive that will accelerate you to full speed very quickly. Just one more time, I'll show you the difference between accelerating this ship under normal drive and accelerating it under gravity drive. Watch the speed in the lower right hand corner. One, two, three. So this gets about one meter per second squared acceleration from its regular thrusters. Now, I'm going to engage the gravity drive and the thrusters and watch the speed this time. Max speed, right there. And then you just fly around as you want to. Turn off the gravity drive, let your inertial dampeners slow you down. And there you have it. That's how you build a gravity drive, and that's how you fly with it.